And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Porta Nigra. This is the first game in the great designer series that Stronghold has put out. Uh, and this one really had me interesting because it has the, the combo duo of Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling. And they put out some amazing games over the years uh, and so this was one I was very intrigued with. I knew that it would probably be a mid-level Euro with a lot of different scoring opportunities and that's something that intrigues me. I've liked many of especially uh, Kramer's games. I just think they're uh, amazing fun things usually. So let's see if this one's one of those. are helping build four large buildings that are being built in this area and one of the sections here is Porta Nigra. In the middle of the board you're going to put 14 different building pieces. Now these building pieces there's a huge pile of them and they're going to be different colors or yellow, red, blue and black which incidentally is the same as the player colors um, but it has nothing to do with the player colors and you'll put them here you'll turn these tiles over and it will show you basically how many to put in each section until you have 14 or more. Uh, at the beginning of a player's turn, if this is ever 7 or less, then they have to build it back up to 14 by drawing these tiles and putting them there. Now, players are trying to get these bricks. When they get them, they're going to put them in front of themselves in these slots to show basically what color bricks that they have. So if I buy a black brick, I'll place it here to show that I have a black brick and I can have a stack of them. Each brick also has a certain cost. You'll see it's one, two, three, four, five. White bricks are special because they are wild bricks and can be used anywhere. Now each spot on the board requires bricks. So let's say down here in this area, you'll see that this spot requires one red, this one two reds, this one three reds, and yellows and whites. Whites only can go here, but again, whites are wild and can be used in other spots. Over in Porta Nigra, this is an unusual part of the board because you have to put three blocks on one of these spots, but you can put all the way up to eight. It's up to you. So players are going to be getting these bricks and placing these bricks. Now the way they'll do that is through some cards that they have. Each player has action cards and on their turn they're going to they have a hand of them and they'll be drawing from a small deck of cards that they have. They're going to play one of these action cards. Now when they play an action card it's going to show many different possible actions on the card. However they can only take the number that's shown on the bottom. So this shows three torches so I can take three actions. So maybe I want to buy a yellow brick, buy a brick of my choice, and build something. Or maybe I want to scroll and five money and take a brick of my choice. It's up to me. I also will have torches and there's ways to get more torches as the game goes by and you can use these as extra actions if you want to on a card. But then they're gone once you've used them. So buying a brick and selling a brick is the main thing. And you have out here your master builder. This person here is riding a horse and they can only move clockwise because, well, why not? So if I want to buy a blue brick and I'm the red player, that's great because I'm in the blue brick area. However, I want to buy a yellow brick, I need to get over here. So I need to move it two spaces this way, which every time I cross one of those lines, I need to pay a coin. So I'd have to pay two coins plus the cost of the yellow brick once I get here. The white bricks can be bought from any section. The same thing it is when you build something. You, wherever you want to build, you have to go there and then you can put the blocks down. You also have to have a Roman to put on top of the blocks. Now players will start with a couple of Romans, but most of them are off the board and there's different ways to get them in your hand. Sometimes it's an action, sometimes it's a bonus. When a player builds something, let's say a player right, goes right here and builds, has three red bricks, so they put them here, they're going to take 11 points because that's how many points it's shown. They are also going to check on the side to see if they get a bonus card. So over here there's going to be bonus cards and this is filled at the beginning of each player's turn and they build a red one in the area where the Colosseum is or the whatever this building is and so there happens to be one of those cards here. If there wasn't, tough luck. If they had built blue, too bad. But because there's a red one they'll take this. At the end of the game 
they're going to get points for each of these different building types they have. So if, let's say at the end of the game, I have three different building types, then I'm going to get 12 points for this set of cards. So collecting these gives you extra sets. Players can also on their turn, if they have any scrolls, and there's different ways to get scrolls, buy cards over on this side. There's 14 of them. And these cards will have a cost of one or two scrolls. So sometimes they're just as simple as take a free brick. Um, put a guy on, you know, build something somewhere on the board. Or take four money and a torch. Or this counts as one of those bonus cards. This one here uh, counts as 30 points. But I have to turn in four bonus cards and two scrolls to get these 30 points. And then later on I can upgrade that to a 42 point card and then to that 42 point card can be upgraded to a 56 point card. A lot of effort and scrolls has to be put into that. When you also build in an area, you're going to look at the bonus for that area. Each area has a bonus. Once you have three, a multiple of three. So I did, I put three bricks here, putting my guy on top of it. And so the bonus here for every three bricks, I get five coins and another Roman from the supply. So maybe later on, I'll build a two yellow so nothing else happens. But then maybe later on, I'll build another two white. And so now I have another multiple of three and I'll get the bonus again. The bonus over here gives you a torch and a Roman. The bonus up here gives you a white brick. And the bonus over here gives you two Romans from the supply and a scroll. Now players are going to do this until every player has gone through their cards. At this point there's an intermediate scoring, and this intermediate scoring will actually happen twice in a two player game, where players will count all the bricks on the board, double that number, and take that much of coins and or points. It's up to them. After the final round of the game, which is two or three if you're playing with two players, players will also score for these bonus cards like I said earlier, or the cards over here, and for majorities in each area. Over where the wall is, whoever has the most bricks there gets 20 points. The second most gets 10 points. Down here, there's two rows, row A and B in this area. And so whoever has the most in row A gets 12 and 6, and then 12 and 6 for row B. Here, there's three rows. And then over here, whoever builds the most of each, how high the building is. So whoever builds the most four-level buildings is going to get 15 points. Whoever builds the most eight-level buildings is going to get 37 points. So you can see you can get a lot of points from these bonuses. You add all this together, and whoever has the most points is the winner. First of all, and this um, does affect my enjoyment of the game, there's a lot of unfortunate things about the game that I was not fond of when it comes to just like niggly little things. For example, these buildings. Now these buildings look like the same buildings that were used in um, Torres, uh, another game that these guys designed many years ago. And I thought so too, but I found that these buildings, they, they, they seem to stack well when you have them like this, but when you're trying to put them in stacks all over the boards, they're consistently falling over. Minor thing. I also found that having to check is there seven or less, is there seven or less, seven or less every turn, and then adding up to 14 was just something that seemed to just kind of slog the game down. Finally, I was a little unhappy that these were not the colors themselves. I think they could have included tiles of these buildings that were in each of the colors, which would have made it interesting. You wouldn't have to worry about where they were on the board. You just look at the middle and say, oh, there's some red bricks, there's some black bricks, there's some blue bricks, you know, etc. And take the ones that you need it. Um, here they have one size fits all. Now I know they had to include bricks of different types that would have thrown the game off a tiny bit because they have a certain number of bricks total. But I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I think they wanted this three-dimensional look, which unfortunately, because the bricks are all gray, constantly having to check, oh, what color are they? And speaking of colors, I mentioned this in the overview, why are the colors of these bricks the same as the player colors? There's no correlation there at all, and that just, it ends up to be a slightly confusing thing for everybody involved. So, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So those are all things, though, that wouldn't affect my overall, I mean, they, they bring it down a little bit, but... You know, is the game fun beyond that point? Well, for me, not really. I like the idea of the game, but the thing about the game was, I mean, there's the there's an interesting idea here, this action card thing. I really like this. You put this down, pick the actions on it. Seems like a simple thing to do, but the problem is, you get caught up in what bricks are available, what bricks do I wanna buy. Okay, I'm, I need to move there, so that costs that much, plus the cost of the brick, and then I wanna move there and build the building. That's gonna cost some more, and so I need to do that, and then I'm going to build that building there, which is going to give me 11 points, but and a possibility to 15 points.
but I could build it over there and get seven points, but a possibility for more points. And it just kind of really can slog down. And I felt that was unfortunate because it seems like this game should be interesting and quick. And another problem I have with these points, I, I don't like to use the word too often a point salad, but that's the way this game felt is do this, get points, do this, get points, do this, get points. And you're always wondering, am I getting enough points? I mean, you have to do some pretty mental gymnastics to figure out if going for that 56 point card is better than building three buildings here. Should I get the bonus here? I mean, every time you build, you're like, I think here's good, but I'm not sure. Maybe putting it here is better. Okay, but if I go here, I'll get this many points. If I go here, i get that many points. And I found that this, that's not the way this game should be. You know, you play other games that give you points in different regards. Like, ooh, if I go there, I'll get eight points, and Bob will get four. Therefore, it's better for me to go there than here, six points. But here, because of these endgame majorities, which really do matter, and because of the amount of money, there's so much thought that goes into every move, and I felt that that detracted a bit from the game. Also, you're essentially doing the same thing. Da, 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 build. Da, 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 build. And... I don't know. I, 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 I felt like most of the buildings are small buildings anyway. There's only one spot on the board where you can build, you know, tall buildings. And that's a neat thing. But it takes, again, it takes a lot of effort to get to that point. And all that effort you're expending, you're wondering, would it have been better to do something else? And I, I understand that the game provides multiple paths to victory, but they're all the same path. You're just not sure which one to go down. It's like, go down that one and you might get 14 points. But that one's 15. Which one's better? You don't know. So I struggled with that and collecting the sets and the cards over here. I like the scroll cards and I like what they could do, but it just felt like you were constantly moving pieces. Some things were not a big deal, like getting more Romans. You only, ha you only start with some and then you get more as the game goes by, but I never felt like, oh, I'm running out of Romans. No, they just showed up. Bonuses and other things, they just kept coming, so it wasn't hard to get them. Money, on the other hand, was this constant ebb and flow, and you're sitting there going, okay, I need to spend money to get these. I don't have money to do this. So overall, the game has some cool concepts. And when I explain it in the video or when I first went through it, I was like, oh, this is going to be pretty interesting. But in the end, it was. And it almost felt like this is a gem or the germ, I'm sorry, of a, of a good idea, but that just wasn't grown. It wasn't expanded. It wasn't, maybe it's too streamlined. I don't know. I think this one is ultimately forgettable. I, I want it to like it, and it seems like a good idea, but at the end, it's just do a bunch of stuff and get some points. Dice Tower Judgment, interesting, but didn't gel for me. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Give the door! Boop. Boop.